So now the student let us explain the processing steps involved in photolithography. What are the key processing steps you need to consider using photolithography? Okay, I will briefly explain some parameters associating with processing steps. So this is very important for especially for the research a student to consider that the processing steps involved in photolithography. The first processing step involved in photolithography is preparation uh, is a cleaning of the wafer. Dear student, please note that there are different types of contaminants present on to the surface of the wafer. Please keep this in mind. Wafer is usually it is a material on which we want to deposit the photographic patterns. So the wafer may be a thin film, it may be a substrate. So it's depend on you that what type of material you want to use on which we want you want to produce a electronic circuiting or electronic setup. So in initially in photolithography you need to clean the wafer okay so this student please keep this in mind there is a possibility of different kind of contaminations present on the surface of the wafer one of the most contaminant which i and which every researcher usually observe is a contamination from scribing or cleaving okay when you uh, scribe you assemble or when you cleave your sample you can easily see that there is or some impurities they are caused due to scribing and cleaving so dear student you need to consider and you need to minimize the impurities which are caused by scribing or cleaving okay so they usually laser scribing is used to clean the wafer from the impurities which are caused due to scribing and cleaving. There may be an atmospheric dust present on the surface of the your wafer. So the atmospheric dust could be a moisture from the water or any other kind of contaminant. So you have to consider it also and the atmospheric dust like water is usually removed just by backing of our sample. There may be possibility of presence of abrasive materials or abrasive impurities. Usually in some case you can observe a lint on the surface of your wafer so you need to wipe those lints okay. There in in photolithographic labs usually uh, the photolithographic machine is active throughout the day so it's different students use the same machine in a different time so there could be a possibility of photo resist residue present in photolithographic machine so uh, you have to clean that photo resist okay <clears throat> and there may be a presence of bacteria or carbon or organic kind of materials on the surface of the, your substrate so you need to or on the surface of your wafer so you need to clean all those impurities and water of course it is usually present on the surface of our wafer so you also need to clean that water in order to clean your wafer the second step is just to prepare your wafer in according to the photoresist which we, we want to use in your photolithographic techniques so you need to consider the properties of the photoresist whether they are matchable with your wafer or not okay you need to consider the hydrophilic properties or hydrophobic properties of the photoresist whether your sample is hydrophilic or hydrophobic to the uh, to the photoresist which is used in your photolithographic uh, process okay so it is very important to understand both the nature of your wafer and as well as the nature of the photoresist third step of processing step involved in 
photolithography is the application of photoresist onto the surface of substrate. Dear student, please note that there are different techniques used in labs in order to deposit a photoresist onto the surface of buffer. First and most commonly used technique to deposit a photoresist onto the surface of the wafer is spin coating. In some cases, many people, many researchers also use dip coating, okay, or layer by layer coating. But however, most commonly and even 99% of the micro in electronic industry use spin coating technique to deposit photo resist on the surface of the wafer. The spinning rate used in photolithography is usually in the range of 2000 RPMs to 6000 RPM and the spinning time is around 50 to 30 seconds. The student, please note that the spinning time and the spinning rate both play a very important role in order to get thicker or thinner photoresist on the surface of the substrate. If the spinning rate of your photoresist on the surface of buffer is much or it is higher, then you will get ultra thin or thin photoresist on the surface of your buffer. However, if the spinning rate is less, then you will get thicker photoresist onto the surface of your buffer. Similarly, spinning time also has a direct correlation with thickness of the photoresist. If the spinning time is more then you will get a thinner film. Similarly, if the spinning time is less, you will get thicker film of photoresist on the surface of the film. However, usually this photoresist using photoresography is spinned for 15 to 30 seconds and the spinning rate widely used is in the range of 200 or 2000 rpms to 6000 rpm so in first term we clean the wafer in second step we prepare the wafer according to the photoresist in third step we deposit the photoresist onto the surface of the wafer this student after Depositing the photoresist onto the surface of the substrate, we bag the photoresist, okay? Usually it is bagged around, uh, around 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, if the temperature could raise, could be increased more. And, and after, after completely bagging the photoresist onto the surface, we expose and develop the pattern on the surface of the photoresist. Okay, so now student, what do you think how in photolithography we expose the surface of the photoresist? For let's explain it in a simple way. The surface of the photoresist is exposed by UV light through mask. Initially in photolithography we prepare ma mask and on and we produce a pattern or we prepare a pattern on mask okay so the pattern which are present are the on the mask are the pattern which we want to produce onto the surface of the wafer so the uv light is fall or is impinged on the mask so there are the patterns present on the mask and the uv light pass through the, those patterns and then it's fall onto the surface of the photoresist 
so when the uv light from the mask fall on the surface of the photoresist then the, the only the region which has a pattern is just exposed and the same patterns are basically formed in the exposed region of the photoresist okay the rest of our whole wafer remain unexposed however the pattern which are present on the mask the same region is exposed on the surface of the photoresist so when the region which of the photoresist is exposed then we use an organic chemical which is known as developer and developer then further develop the exposed region and convert the, it it into a pattern okay so basically developer develop the exposed region so basically on the surface of substrate on the substrate of on the surface of wafer we have a photoresist and that and the photoresist has an exposed region which are exposed by uv light and then these exposed region are developed by the developer after developing the surface of the photoresist with a pattern we usually do etching etching is a process of physical removal of the material so with etching process photoresist is removed okay so dear student etching is a traditional process in which different types of acids or moderant or used and which basically remove the unprotected part of the thin film or the unexposed part of the photoresist so basically in photolithography different kind of acids are used in etching and they remove the unexposed part of the photo resist okay so those they are basically removed by etching so this uh, plasma etching is uh, most commonly used in the removal of the photo resist from the uh, from the surface of the uh, from the surface of the wafer so the student like you know the a photo resist we don't require a photo resist because we have exposed the uh, region of the wafer so after the photo resist is no longer needed we need to remove it from the substrate this is usually done by etching process okay so etching is basically a physical removal of the photo resist from the it basically physically remove the photoresist from the surface of the uh, wafer okay so usually different types of methods are used to remove the uh, photoresist okay the photoresist are commonly in lab uh, plasma uh, containing oxygen is basically used as plasma which is known as plasma etching is used to remove the uh, Uh, photo resist uh, from the surface of the uh, from the surface of the uh, substrate or from the surface of the wafer. so basically the plasma which uh, etching basically it's, it's just oxidized the um, photo resist and there is also another type of substrate which is known as nmp uh, solvent basically which is a chemical way of the Uh, removal of the photoresist from the surface of the sub substrate an mp solv solvent is it's, it's a methyl uh, pyrolo pyrolidone or something like what's the name of it i think it is methyl uh, pyrolidone something like that an mp solvent commonly it's known as an mp solvent which is 
used and with this NLP solvent the uh, material is uh, basically the photoresist is removed so uh, uh, the etching is process of physical removal so in etching uh, step we don't need more photoresist and we have to just remove the photoresist and because the region of the sample is exposed on which you want to deposit the pattern so with the etching process the uh, surface is basically uh, the the organic uh, what you can say like uh, the photoresist is removed by uh, plasma edging or use or by using a different chemical solvent like NMP and with that we remove the um, photoresist and we get the pattern on on the surface of the uh, wafer so after removing the uh, and the the photoresist from the surface of the wafer we basically produce a feature onto the surface of the web. So, in conclusion, the processing step of, of photolithography involves the preparation and cleaning of wafer. So, the first step of photolithography is that we need to prepare a wafer. And second step of photolithography, we need to prepare the wafer according to the to the nature of the photoresist. In third step of photolithography, we deposit, we coat a photoresist onto the surface of the wafer. After coating the photoresist onto the surface of the wafer, we expose the surface of the wafer by UV light. Okay, the UV light pass through the mask and it just fall onto the surface of the photoresist and after falling on the surface of the photoresist the surface of the photoresist is exposed according to the pattern present on the mask so after getting the exposed pattern on, of, on the surface of the uh, photoresist we develop the pattern of the photoresist by using different organic developers after developing the pattern on the surface of the wafer we need to remove the photo mask which is present on the wafer because this photo the photo mask present on the wafer is not we don't need it more so different types of etching techniques such as plasma uh, plasma etching or plasma ashing is used or we also we may use different types of solvent organic solvent like NMP solvents and these solvent basically etch or remove the photoresist which is present on the surface of the wafer after removing the um, the surface or after removing the photoresist from the surface of the wafer we get fine patterns on the surface of wafer so these are the five key processing parameters which we need to consider in the photolithographic techniques dear student please keep in mind that i will in next lecture i will briefly explain that what are the physical and as well as chemical parameters associated with the processing parameters so it is very important especially for the search twin to consider the physical parameters like if you want to do the wafer cleaning you need to know the is there any interaction of the environmental chemicals with the uh, surface of your wafer or not what is the um, nature of the wafer which you uh, uh, with respect to the photoresist whether the photoresist is hydrophobic or is, is it acting hydrophilic to the uh, nature of the uh, wafer you need uh, to consider the etching technique which type of technique you need to use uh, in order to remove the photoresist from the surface of your wafer so I will briefly explain all those processing parameter in in depth in next lecture okay so thank you for watching this part two of our lecture of photolithography